Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're gonna to be showing you guys how to set up your sequence settings from this list of literally infinite options. And then to top it all off at the end, we're gonna show you how your sequence settings might impact mixing frame rates. So if you've tried to set up your sequence before by going up to File, New, Sequence, you've probably encountered the daunting notion of having to select from all of these different options. Well, happy to say that you actually don't have to. You actually don't even have to worry about what the best sequence settings are because it doesn't technically exist. There's not one best sequence setting, there's only the one that's best for your particular clips. You're not going to make your footage magically better by choosing certain sequence settings. You're only going to prevent potential problems by best matching your footage specifications. Our suggestion would be to just let Premiere do the work for you. Simply go to one piece of footage that you know you're planning to use. And if you shot all of your footage in the same way, in the same resolution, format, etc., then just right click that clip and select New Sequence from Clip. And there you go, your sequence is set up to specifically match the settings of that clip. But what happens if you want to make changes after the fact? Say for example if you shot in two different frame rates or resolutions and you want to change one to the other, but you've already got a lot of work done on your timeline. Let's say you shot in 4K 24 frames per second and also in 1080p 60 frames per second. And you want to change your sequence from 1080p 60 frames to 4K at 24 frames. There's two different ways that you could do this. If you drag and drop the new clip onto your timeline with different settings to that of your current timeline sequence, as long as you have an empty timeline, this dialog box will pop up. From here you can decide whether you want to change the sequence to the new clip or keep the existing sequence settings. If you change it from here, it'll automatically set up what's best for that new clip. But if you want to go through this process more manually, especially if there's a lot of other elements already on your timeline, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is go up to Sequence, Sequence Settings, and if that's grayed out, all you have to do is make sure that you click anywhere in your timeline to make this blue highlighted box surround it. So once you're here, like in our particular situation, most likely what you're going to want to change is either the frame rate or the resolution. To change the frame rate, all you have to do is go here to Time Base and manually select which one you need. So for mine, I'm going to be selecting 23.976. Now, while you might be used to hearing people talk about 24 frames per second, the actual true frame rate of 24 frames per second is this seemingly strange number. I shot off a Panasonic GH5S, for example, and you can see here that the frame rate my footage metadata shows is actually this new strange number. This isn't the video going into the difference between those two different frame rates, but it's a good example to show you that you shouldn't just assume your footage specifications, but instead check them out for yourself right beside your footage. So let's manually select our frame rate. Great. Now for resolution, we can key in a different amount if we'd like here. Our 4K footage actually has two completely different numbers, and we can actually find what those are in our footage metadata like we did for frame rate. Right here. And this is what we're going to key in. So let's jump back into our sequence settings. Keep in mind though that this ratio to the right here, 16 by 9, is our current framing ratio when we reduced 1920 by 1080 to its lowest fraction. If this doesn't end up being the same fraction, it means that we're changing the shape slightly of our frame and this will likely cause some problems in your edit. Not like functional problems where Premiere Pro will crash or anything, but problems like your footage might get cut off in different ways, effects might not work necessarily as you expected, and so on. So we're going to key in the length here of 3840, and when we click off of it you'll see that the fraction changes, but it's okay because we haven't changed the height yet. So let's key in the height of 2160. And you can see that it's ended up back at that ratio of 16 by 9. If you wanted to change up this ratio intentionally, maybe to have an aspect ratio that's a little bit more thin and cinematic, you can do that, but you're going to want to make sure that you have a plan going into it. For example, if you didn't shoot your footage with that in mind, you might not like your results. So before we hit enter, let's go through a few other options that might help you. You can keep pixel aspect ratio square, fields at progressive scan, and display format is either in timecode or frames, your personal preference. But under audio, you can actually raise the sample rate here up to 48,000 Hz and keep audio samples. Now we get into a section called video previews. Here we can change the specific format of the video preview files that Premiere Pro will generate to help playback occur a lot more smoothly. If you're having trouble with Premiere Pro playback lag, we actually have a video all about that, and I'll link to it for you to check out. 
but really, iframe MPEG is set to default for a reason because it typically works out best for most people. From here, you can hit OK and your changes will all be applied. Great. So before we wrap things up here, we wanted to address one last thing and tie in a question that we've gotten in the past. You might have noticed that for our in-person sections like what you're seeing right now, we shoot in 24 frames per second. But you might have also noticed that it kind of looks like our screen capture elements are captured in 60 frames per second, which they are. So we're clearly mixing frame rates, but I thought you weren't supposed to mix frame rates. Well, no, that's not technically true. Now, to be clear, you can experience problems down the line if you end up mixing frame rates. Like, for example, if you throw a warp stabilizer onto a clip that's one frame rate and then nest it into a sequence that's another frame rate, you can end up with this effect that looks like warp stabilizer is moving around and adjusting your camera frame in a higher frame rate than your footage is actually playing back. But there are tons of reasons why mixing frame rates would actually be desirable. And slow motion footage is actually a really good example. Well, think about it. If you're delivering in 24 frames per second, you don't want to have shot your slow motion in 24 frames per second. Otherwise, it would look kind of like this. Gross. Now, a lot of cameras will have some sort of a variable speed mode, which basically takes the higher frame rate that you shot at and then manually converts it and stretches it out into a different resulting frame rate, most likely 24 frames per second. But a lot of times you're gonna be shooting in a higher frame rate and making those decisions later. 60 frames per second is a really great example. Even if you dropped your 60 frame per second footage and didn't stretch it out, you just let it play back full speed, it would still look like 24 frames per second because each of those individual frames isn't showing through the final baked in result of 24 frames per second. So what about for us? Our screen capture elements don't need to be in 60 frames per second. That's just more of an aesthetic choice. Well, basically all that we're doing is we're actually setting up our timeline to be in 60 frames per second. Then when we place everything down, it's got a bit more of that modern smooth feeling to it, but all of our 24 frame per second elements are still playing back effectively in 24 frames per second. That's because they're not actually trying to space it out and fill out that extra space between frames. They're just holding each individual frame until the next one is ready to be displayed in succession. Two identically shot clips, one at 24 and one at 60 frames per second, will take up the same amount of time. It's just how densely each of those frames is actually compacted together. By doing this, we find that we're able to retain that recognizable aesthetic when shooting people and also to have that more modern smooth feeling when dealing with computer screen captured elements. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this kind of more unique tutorial on sequence settings. And if you found it helpful, consider liking this video, subscribing to our YouTube channel, and checking out all the awesome stuff we have to offer right here at motionarray.com. Thanks so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.